This backrooms entity took only a few minutes to put together, and if you can believe it, the entire pipeline for doing it was free, so I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Mixamo.com. Now Mixamo is this amazing website run by Adobe, uh, and basically it has this massive catalog of free to use 3D models. And you can use these for any of your projects. You can make video games, you can make personal projects. Uh, in this case, you can make a backrooms video, and you don't have to pay royalties for using these characters, which is amazing. You will have to create an Adobe account to use Mixamo, but it is free, so it shouldn't be a problem for you. So now that you've got your account set up, it's time to put together our character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search up Monster, and again, you can use any of these 3D models that you like, uh, but I'm going to select this guy, Maynard. I think he looks uh, perfect for the backroom style. Uh, he's just the right amount of creepy. Uh, he looks like something that would be living there, so I'm going to use him as my character. Once I've got him selected, I'm going to go up here to the second tab, which is animations. And did I forget to mention that there is also a massive free library of animations that you can use for anything, um, which is just, again, uh, this amazing thing. So since we want to make the monster run, I'm going to search up run. And you've got this whole uh, set of running animations to choose from. And I found this uh, zombie run one and it's it's actually kind of perfect for this character as well it looks like that this would be a motion that uh, this character does so we've got a good character we've got a good animation I'm actually gonna turn up this energy slider uh, so we can move just a little bit faster and I'm also gonna turn up overdrive um, so that it speeds up the animation just a little bit to make it a, a bit more uh, scarily fast that he's running at you. So yeah, that looks good. Now you'll see that this animation is only one cycle. So he does two steps and then it loops back. And we want to have a longer, more versatile animation for this character. So to fix that, I'm going to check in place on the right hand side. Now that we've got him running in place, I'm going to click download. FBX binary, 30 frames per second, you can change that to 60 or 24 with skin and download. So now that I've got this character downloaded, I'm going to open up Blender. I'm going to open up this Backrooms project that I've already created um, that has a nice, this is actually a scene from my last Backrooms animation, uh, and I removed the entity that was sitting there and I've got this nice camera motion for it. Now, if you want to learn how to put together this backrooms room, I've got a separate tutorial that goes more in depth on how to do that. So now that we've got our backrooms room set up for the entity, I'm gonna go file, import, and .fbx, and I'm gonna find my file. So I found my file here, zombie running two, and I'm gonna click import FBX. So we've got the character in the room and uh, it looks great. His, his uh, skin and textures are all there already. But as we can see, there's only one cycle on the running, which we wanna change. So I'm gonna go to the left here where there's this little clock for timeline. I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna go here to non-linear animation and click that. So it turns out that I've got a lot of animations that uh, already existed in this room, but I'm gonna find here where it says armaturemixamo.com and I'm gonna click this button, push down action. So now you've got this action track uh, and I'm gonna go to this little tiny arrow on this side, click that. Uh, and go to strip. So once you're in strip, click on this arrow next to action clip and scroll down here to this bar that says repeat. Uh, and I'm gonna set this value from one to 10. And as you can see, the orange uh, bar increased in size. And when I play the animation, his running animation is now repeated 10 times, which is great, that's more than enough. Now just keep in mind that this is going to be playing at a slower rate just because Blender is uh, processing it, so right now it's at around 12 frames per second, so this isn't actually uh, as fast as this character would be going. One way to get a more accurate estimate of how fast this character is going is going up here to the viewport uh, mode and going here to the second from the left, the viewport shading, and now he'll play at the right speed, you just won't see his textures. So now we've got the character and the animation set up, and again, you can do this for any character and animation uh, combination on Mixamo, which is great. So I'm gonna put this tab back to 
timeline, and now I'm going to get this character to the place where I want him to start at. So as you can see here, the camera kind of flips there, and I want him to be running out to the camera from there. So I'm going to go out of the camera view, I'm going to press G, X, bring him over here, G, Y, uh, and get him to the right spot. So now that I've got him in the right spot, I'm gonna select this dot next to the play button on the timeline, and I'm gonna press G and then click again uh, with that armature selected. So now it has created a keyframe for that position. So now I'm gonna move from there to the position that I want him to be at. Uh, so it's gonna be at around here when he goes out of the camera. And I'm going to move him with this little blue dot selected again, uh, move him closer to where the camera is. And as you can see, that's made a new keyframe there for where he's going. And now he's moving straight towards the camera. Ooh, creepy. And you can always go back to the second from the right tab uh, to see how this character looks. Uh, and if you really want to get antsy, you can go to the <laughs> rightmost tab, and since I'm in cycles, it just bakes my computer whenever I hit that, but you can kind of, you can render a few test images and see how the character looks in the environment. So once you've got the character moving in a way that you like it and you're kind of happy with how that looks, uh, you're pretty much done with the animation side of things, now it's just time to uh, export the animation correctly. Since this is in cycles, again, it takes a long time for my system to render, so all of my animations have been at 640 by 480 because it really works for this backroom style. Down here in the output settings, I'm going to select PNG, RGBA, and 16 color depth. This means that the frames will render individually as PNG files, which you can put together later uh, in editing softwares. But that means if the program crashes, you won't lose your entire video. Now here in the scene settings, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's Cycles or Eevee, whichever one you're doing your room on, uh, and device is GPU Compute. Uh, and a lot of people, when they followed my last Backrooms tutorial, were wondering why it took so long to render. And that's because the max samples here in the Render tab uh, are sometimes set to over a thousand. And for me, 400 or less keeps the time manageable. And with 400, it's about five minutes per frame. Uh, so if you want to turn that down or use Eevee for essentially instant rendering, uh, those will also work. If you're using Cycles, you should check this Denoise option, uh, and this shows up here in uh, Blender version 3.1, which is what I have, and you should also check Motion Blur to make it um, super realistic. Once you've got it all set up, you can go up here to the top left, click Render, and click Render Animation. All right, so after a night of rendering, uh, we've got all of the frames here in a folder. Uh, it took around three minutes per frame to render, um, but now we've got them all here. So what I'm gonna do is select the first one, shift select the last one, and I'm going to drag it into a DaVinci Resolve project, and also make sure that everything is set to 30 frames per second, or whatever frame rate uh, you did the animation in. Once all that is set, you should see the animation playing in the preview window. All right, so I've got all the audio set up, the video's in place, everything's looking good. Uh, so it's time to wrap up our shot. I think the final shot came out pretty well. If you guys followed this tutorial all the way through, definitely comment down below how your final shot came out. I hope this tutorial helped you guys out in making the type of content you want to create. And if it did help you out, uh, please consider liking the video and subscribing. It really helps me out uh, a lot. Uh, and maybe join the Discord too. We've got uh, over a hundred members there now, which is amazing. Um, so definitely join if you want to uh, get specific questions answered or if you want to connect with the rest of the Schnoiki community. Um, but yeah, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you guys later. Take care.